So now what we need to focus on as we continue our look at nutrition is the idea of glucose homeostasis, and that's what we'll entitle the next flowchart. This is one of the most important homeostatic processes that occur within the body, and it's very important to understand how and why we make sure glucose is homeostatically maintained at the right levels. Remember, homeostasis means balance, and the balance of glucose, aka the balance of sugar within the body, is going to be a major, major part of understanding any type of nutrition. So, let's first begin by looking at what glucose is, and this is a term, a molecule we've heard of a million times. Glucose primarily is involved in cell respiration. Big deal, right? Yes, major big deal because of the fact that cell respiration is done by every single living cell. And so glucose drives every single living cell's life. Glucose is the life molecule, therefore, of cells. So again, glucose is going to be very important in that cell respiration process. In addition, glucose as an ingested material is a very important source of carbon. It's an important source of carbon for macromolecules. So it can also be broken down and its carbon molecules can be utilized further. Its carbon elements can be utilized further to build other macromolecules. Remember glucose is C6H12O6. Six carbon molecules can be utilized to make other stuff in that idea of organic building blocks. So glucose plays a big role in that. So therefore because it's involved in these very important two functions it's critically important to make sure that its levels must, absolutely must, be maintained within a normal range. Glucose levels must be maintained within what is considered a normal, functional, healthy range. Now, this actually varies based off of the individual and the lifestyle, but generally speaking, we can state that a normal, and this is measured as blood glucose level, the amount of glucose within the blood, dissolved within the blood, is a good way to measure your glucose levels that are su successfully or not successfully being maintained. A normal blood glucose, and this is a number to remember, is anywhere between 70 to 110 milligrams per 100 milliliters of blood. So that's our normal blood glucose level to be aware of. This cannot just happen on its own. It must be maintained. This is homeostasis. This is a balance. How do we maintain that balance? Well, a major part of maintaining glucose homeostasis is done via an organ known as the pancreas. Pancreas is something we've covered before, but mainly from a digestive perspective. Let's take a look at it from a different perspective now. So, the pancreas has a couple of major functions, and we'll do those on the bottom over here. Its functions are twofold. Its functions include exocrine functions, and these are functions via a duct, and also, something we have not covered yet, the pancreas also functions endocrinely, without ducts. Now, let's just reiterate its exocrine functions. The pancreas produces pancreatic juice, PJ. And pancreatic juice will have tons and tons of digestive enzymes within it that are sent via a duct to the small intestine, the duodenum, in order to ensure thorough digestion and breakdown of food. So it's sent through the bile duct. Key word here is duct. Therefore, it is endocrine. Duct means endocrine. Through the bile duct to the small intestine. I'm not a bile duct, but let's just say through ducts to small intestine. The bile duct is specifically from the gallbladder. But let's just know that the pancreas utilizes ducts to go to the small intestine in order to put pancreatic juice where it's supposed to be in the duodenum. That's an exocrine way to work. Endocrine means without ducts. So these are going to be cells that secrete things into the blood primarily. Now, in terms of the pancreatic endocrine function, we have to focus on a cluster of cells within the pancreas, totally separate from these pancreatic juice producing cells. These are going to be a cluster of cells that are known as the pancreatic islets. So they're an island-like arrangement of cells, Pancrea pancreatic islets. Um, these are also sometimes referred to by their name uh, that for the person who discovered them, the islets of Langerhans. But specifically what we need to understand about these clusters of cells is that each cluster 
will have two types of cells. Each cluster with two types of cells and we need to know what these types are and the difference between them because they are very very different but they work together. What we have are first alpha cells and this is the Greek symbol for alpha and we also have beta cells and this is the Greek symbol for beta, things we've seen before. Alpha cells and beta cells do two separate things but function together as we'll see in just a second. Alpha cells are going to be the primary cells that secrete the glucagon hormone, glucagon hormone, that's a hormone to remember. And beta cells will do something else. They secrete the insulin hormone. Secrete insulin hormone. Two separate hormones with two very different and two very separate functions, but they will act in uh, some sort of accordance with each other, as we'll see in just a second. So again, to reiterate, the pancreas has exocrine function with this pancreatic juice that's sent through a duct to the small intestine, but also an endocrine function in which you're going to release chemical messengers called hormones, glucagon and insulin respectively, from the alpha and beta cells of the islets within the pancreas. Okay, so big deal. What are insulin and glucagon and what do they have to do with glucose homeostasis? Let's take a look here. Insulin plus glucagon. These two hormones are going to initially be secreted into the interstitial fluid that surrounds these islets, these cells, and then from there it will travel into the blood. Now, it makes sense that you want this hormone to travel into the blood and you want this pancreatic juice to stay within the bile duct because this pancreatic, pancreatic juice contains all these crazy digestive enzymes, hydrolytic enzymes, very capable of breaking down things. You want to keep them contained, right? Keep them within the compartment that they're supposed to be in. Makes sense that they're in exocrine. Endocrine, on the other hand, you want these to go to the whole body. So you've got to hop on that bloodstream highway, and that's exactly what happens here with both insulin and glucagon. Now, I've been saying that they work together and they kind of don't. The way that we can best establish the relationship between insulin and glucagon from a glucose homeostasis perspective is to state that they are both antagonists. They have an antagonistic relationship. I think that's a better way to state this. Antagonistic relationship to each other. So basically what we notice is the following. They are going to work in opposition. One will do some job and the other will do the exact opposite. That's what antagonistic antagonists are. They work in opposition to maintain homeostasis of glucose, of sugar, we'll generally state. To maintain the balance that's necessary of homeo of sugar. And by sugar, I generally just mean glucose. Same idea. We can interchangeably use those terms. Sugar is a more broad term to use. Now, insulin and, insulin and glucagon are both going to be highly regulated, as we'll see in the next flowchart as we continue this look at homeostasis. But we'll summarize and conclude this video by stating that the secretion of both is directly influenced, it's controlled by the respective blood glucose level. So we will have a detection sort of mechanism within the pancreas or within cells or within the brain as a whole to make sure that the blood glucose level is at the correct level. If it's not, both insulin or glucagon, depending on if it's too high or too low, as we'll see in the next video, will be utilized and will function in order to get back to a homeostatic uh, relationship between glucose and the rest of the body. That covers our first look at glucose homeostasis. We'll continue this discussion in the next video.